Welcome back everybody to another Motorbot video and this week Kawasaki announced two very interesting looking new motorcycles in the form of their electric Ninja E1 and ZE1. So could these brand new machines for the 2024 model year mark a turning point where we really start to move over to electrics or are they still too far ahead of the curve? Well in this video we'll go through all the details to find out. Now first up look these aren't the most powerful electric bikes that we've seen on the market so far. Kawasaki are saying that they're more so an equivalent for a 125 and so from the electric motor you'll get about five kilowatts which is just about seven horsepower and in fact that's significantly down on the 15 horsepower that you'll get from one of their 125 cc petrol bikes there is however an e-boost mode that pushes peak power up to nine kilowatts so more like 12 horsepower but it will only engage for 15 seconds and then it needs a bit of time to replenish itself this feature does though allow the bike up to a maximum speed of about six 60 miles per hour, but it's so short lived that really it's more like an overtaking assist than something that you can just leave on. Where electric bikes do typically excel though is with torque, and these bikes make a handy 40.5 newton meters right down low in the rev range between 0 and 1600 RPM. That's well above the petrol equivalent, so the Ninja 125, for example, that makes 11 newton meters at 7700 RPM, so you do have to get it spinning up a bit. I think we can safely say that these two bikes bikes, despite the sort of sporty appearances, are specifically designed for the urban environment and commutes, as opposed to something like the Harley Livewire, which does try to emulate the all-rounder capabilities of something like a middleweight naked bike. So I think in that context, the punchiness of that torque down low will be valuable in terms of getting away from the traffic lights and getting ahead of the other vehicles. The other thing that looks pretty good here as well is the weight, so often full-sized electric motorcycles can be a little bit plump because of the denseness of the batteries but because this bike has a range that's suited more to town riding it doesn't really seem to suffer the same weight penalty so the ZE1 naked for example comes in at 135 kilograms ready to ride which is a good 12 kilograms less than the equivalent Z125 the Ninja E1 well that's a little bit heavier of course because of the extra bodywork with the fairings but that's still only 140 kilograms and that's still eight kilograms less than a Ninja 125 so again, this slenderness should help with getting off the line quickly, but also it should make the bikes easy to thread through traffic, which in my experience of commuting through London for many years, you know, that's what really counts when it comes to cutting down on your journey time. Like I say, range isn't massive on these bikes. They're claiming about 72 kilometers or 44 miles. But if you do consider the bike's sole purpose to be purely for riding in the city, then actually that should be enough to get to work and back without having to charge up. London, for example of course is our biggest city and to ride from right on the outskirts at like the m25 right into the middle of oxford circus well that's just under 20 miles so it'd be a 40 mile round trip and that would be quite an extreme example i think most people would be doing less in a day the only thing i'd be cautious of is those official range figures you know you tend to have to ride very conservatively to hit them now the battery layout is actually quite interesting here because they've decided to split it into two and that makes it easier to remove from the bike so you can charge them at home. To be honest, I think this is a really important feature because actually not many people in the city are lucky enough to have a driveway or a garage. Most people live in flats or apartments and so you have to leave the bike out on the street and I don't think it's really practical to run a cable over the pavement without anyone suing you or at very least pulling it out. So to me, carrying the batteries indoor and sticking them in the dedicated dock seems like a much better option. Now each one weighs 11.5 kilograms, so much more easily portable for a wide range of people than if they'd have used one big 23 kilogram battery, especially if you've got to go up a few flights of stairs. Kawasaki claimed three and a quarter hours to charge each battery, which I've got to say isn't particularly fast, but then most people are at home in the evening for more than that, or in the office in the day for more than that, and so either should provide ample opportunity to get a full charge. As for the chassis spec, well it looks pretty basic, as you'd expect from a bike that's a sort of 125cc stature, so there's the typical Kawasaki steel trellis frame, some simple right way up forks and a monoshock at the rear. You've got 17 inch wheels at both ends and a two pot brake up front with a single disc. And then it's got to be said some fairly slender looking tires, although to be fair, it's not exactly laying down MotoGP levels of power. So I'd expect this bike to be decent enough in terms of the handling. After all, Kawasaki got plenty of experience in this department, but the running gear does look like it's built down to a price. Now ergonomically, this is a relatively small 
normal bike with a standard seat height of 785 millimeters, but that makes total sense for a city bike where you do want to get both your feet down easily as you waddle through traffic. And it should also help to broaden the appeal out to newer or less experienced riders. There is though the option to fit a 30 millimeter higher ergo fit accessory seat. So that takes it up to a much more familiar 815 millimeters if you're used to riding bigger bikes. And so for me, that looks like a nice option if you're on the taller side or if you just want to make it feel a bit more tail up and sporty. Now naturally with the two styles of bike, one being the sporty fared ninja and one being the flat bar naked in the Z, you've got a couple of choices of handlebar position with the ninja being a little bit lower and narrower. Really though, considering it's a city bike, I'd expect it to sell more units based on the name and the looks and having a bit of that more exciting image because from a practical perspective, clearly being sat more upright in town traffic makes the Z look like a much more logical purchase. Now, from a technology perspective, you've got a couple of riding modes, so road and eco, as well as that fleeting e-boost button that I just mentioned. And there's also a forward and backward walking mode, which they say makes it easier to park the bike in tight spots, especially if you've got to back it uphill. Then you've got a TFT dash with a little bit of phone connectivity. And so although it's not the latest and greatest in terms of lean sensitive high-tech rider aids, it does seem appropriately specced for this level of bike. So I think all round it does look pretty decent and well designed for a specific purpose. But yet again, with electric bikes, the sticking point is probably going to be the price. A petrol power Z125, for example, will cost you less than five grand, but these two are almost up at £8,000. Now look, things have certainly progressed from the days when you were looking at like almost 20 grand for an electric bike a few years ago, but still that's a heck of a premium over a petrol bike. And there are still some inferiorities in terms of range and power. That said, it is still exciting to see a major manufacturer start to move into this area and hopefully they'll keep getting better and better. But for now, I'd love to know what you think of it. So do let me know down in the comments below. If you're new here and you want to see more of the latest motorcycle news like this right here on YouTube, then please do hit subscribe. Many thanks for watching today and we'll see you in the next one.